Praise the Lord, ye heavens adore Him. Praise Him, angels in the heights. Sun and moon rejoice before Him. Praise Him, all ye stars of light. Praise the Lord, for He has spoken. Words His mighty voice obeyed. Laws which never shall be broken, for their guidance he has made. Praise the Lord, for he is glorious, never shall his promise fail. God has made his saints victorious, sin and death shall not prevail. Praise the God of our salvation, host on high his power proclaim. Heaven and earth and all creation, Lord and magnify his name. With honor, glory, blessing, Lord, we offer Expressing in glad homage, bend the knee. All the saints in heaven adore thee. We would bow before thy throne. Thine as angels serve thee for thee, so on earth thy will. Good morning. Today we celebrate the 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time, and we especially welcome those who are visiting with us today. And should you want to join our community, there's information in all our doors. The readings will start on page 212. Please rise and turn to page 211 and greet our celebrant, Father Dan Lincoln. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus be with you. And with your spirit. We are called to discern God's will in our lives and to follow it as Jesus did. Lord Jesus, you emptied yourself to become human. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you were obedient unto death. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are exalted in the glory of God. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
let us pray. O oh God, who manifest your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, you say, the Lord's way is not fair. Hear now, house of Israel, it is my way that is unfair or rather are not your ways unfair when someone virtuous turns away from virtue to commit inequity and dies it is because of the inequity he committed that he must die but if he turns from the wickedness he has committed and does what is right and just he shall preserve his life since he has turned away from all the sins that he has committed he shall surely live he shall not die the word of the Lord. Our second reading is from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, any participation in the Spirit, any compassion and mercy, complete my joy by being of the same mind with the same love, united in heart, thinking one thing. Do nothing out of selfishness or out of vainglory, Rather, humbly regard others as more important than yourselves, each looking out not for his own interests, but also for those of others. Having you the same attitude that is also in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. 
Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Sorry. Wrong page. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people, what is your opinion? A man had two sons. He came to the first and said, Son, go out and work in the vineyard today. He said in reply, I will not. But afterwards changed his mind and went. The man came to the other son and gave him the same order. He said in reply, Yes, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did his father's will? The answer, the first. Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, he did not believe him, but tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet even... When you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe in Him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Some things never change even among the turmoil of the COVID virus. Now is the time for the annual Catholic Services Appeal. Uh, and that annual fund stops for nothing. This annual appeal helps the work of the Archbishop's Office in all the agencies of the Archdiocese, including our small Catholic parishes in what we call the Southern Kentucky Missions, where I served for 12 years before coming here. I can attest to the good work that is being done down there in the Southern Kentucky Missions. And it could not happen without the funds of the annual 
Catholic Services appeal. And that same holds true for all the agencies in the offices of the Archdiocese that are funded by the CSA because they can't take up weekly Sunday collections like a normal parish does for their income. I always endorse the Catholic Services Appeal because I know the good that it does and that the money is put to use in good ways right away here in our own Archdiocese. I ask for the Archbishop that you respond quickly and generously to the donor request when it comes to you in the mail. There are extra donation forms in the church lobby uh, if you have misplaced yours or didn't receive one. I usually donate the same amount I tithe monthly to our parish, but this year I'm going to double that amount. Because I am so grateful, I have not been personally affected physically or financially by COVID. And in the assumption that some people that have been might not be able to give as much this year. I trust that you will do the best you can, and I thank you in advance for your consideration. And by the way, congratulations for having reached our financial goal last year. What a generous response for that several years in a row we have reached our goal. Our goal remains the same this year. Uh, St. Bridget has a $37,000 financial goal, uh, which is a pretty high goal for a parish our size of 400 families. Uh, but again, we've managed to reach that for several years. Our participation goal is 116 families. That's barely over 25%. Uh, so we should do well uh, toward that goal. Remember the importance of the participation goal. It's good and necessary that we all take part in this effort, no matter how much we can afford to give, that at least we send in the donation form uh, and give something. I thank you in advance for your response uh, for your past generosity uh, and for your future gifts. I believe in one God, the Father. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
our second song is on uh, page 651, Remember Your Love, 651. For those of you who are at home and unable to be with us today, let us do an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you, never permitting me to be separated from you. Amen. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body 
that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. This morning, religious education starts. Preschool through third grade is on the second floor. Fourth grade through eighth grade is on the third floor. Nine through 12 is in the Catholic Community Center. And I will be in the back after mass with uh, the summer, the fall event tickets for anybody that needs to pick them up or place an order. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This beautiful celebration is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and love one another. Thank you, God. God has chosen me, God has chosen me to bring good news to the poor. God has chosen me, God has chosen me to bring new life for those searching for life. God has chosen me, chosen me. And to tell the world that God's kingdom is near to remove oppression and break down fear. Yes, God's time is near, God's time is near, God's time is near. Welcome, everyone, to the 12th year of Conversations with Archbishop Kurtz. Welcome, Archbishop. Well, thanks, Brian, and uh, good to be able to, to uh, wear the, the masks and be six feet apart and uh, uh, honor the needs that we have right now. My gosh. We, we've certainly all learned to do a lot of new things, we haven't sure we? Have. we? We sure have. We sure have. Very good. Well, we have an important show today. You know, uh, 2020 may go down in history as one of the most challenging years in a long, long time. Yeah. Um, lots of issues and so, so today we're going to explore two of the key things going on in our in our church in our world in our community um, the uh, second segment when you interview someone we have a special guest uh, Net Turner who is our director of the office of multicultural ministries and then this last part you're going to talk to us about the sin of racism mm -hmm. and how that affects all of us but this first segment that's why we were in the masks is going to start talk about COVID-19 the pandemic um, my goodness, what an experience for all of us. Yeah, you know, someone, uh, I, I think it was Eva Gonzalez in one of our daily prayers last month, uh, she talked about, here's this little virus that you can't even see, and look at the effect yeah. that it has had kind of turning upside down oh. our, our, our culture, our routines, and our lives, and yet um, in the midst of it, Brian, uh, what's loud and clear is the church's teachings on the common good. We need to protect one another. Sure. That's as part of our faith. And so uh, I don't like wearing a mask. I don't like, uh, of course, I, I like having the cleanest hands I've had since I was uh, two months old. <laughs> but, uh, but in many ways, whether I like it or not, uh, I have a duty to protect others, and that's the common good. Yes, yes. You know, we, when you go back to March, we had that very strange experience of under the, the leadership of our civic officials to to stop doing programming, yeah. close the schools, and even suspend having mass in our churches. What a very strange time. Um, 
and even the imagery of closing churches yeah. felt so awkward. Um, I remember thinking about it as, are we closing or are we just sh shifting and dispatching our people out? What's your experience yeah. of that? Yeah, uh, I, I, the same thing. Well, you may remember that first weekend we, we said social distancing, hygiene, masks, okay. We get it. We need to do that. Uh, the closing, we actually waited an extra week and, yeah, and reflected right. a little more upon our church's teachings to make sure that it, it was genuinely a pastoral decision. Yeah. And I'm glad we did. And of course, as you know, we, uh, I was in great contact with uh, the bishops throughout our province. Uh, not that we had to do all the same things, but that, that there needed to be good consultation. And I did that too with our priest council and with so many other groups uh, to be able to hear from people to make sure that we're making wise decisions. Uh, you're right, I, I never dreamed that the live streaming, think of Holy Week. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there were more people who participated. Now, um, I, I have to say, I worry now about uh, the effects of isolation. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been, been talking to a lot of priests, making some calls and and knowing that we have to keep uh, physical distance. We have to make sure that we, we uh, limit or what they call mitigate the spread of COVID. But as we do so, we have to be aware also that as social human beings, we, we need to attend to our mental health, our physical, emotional health. So there are a lot of challenges, sure. uh, but, but many things that we, we actually were pretty good at. I have to tell you, our people were really very, very good. Weren't you, weren't you amazed at even how early, because that was March, um, our parishes moved from being, what do we do to all the things they began to start doing. Yeah, creative. Uh, uh, creative activities. Yeah. You know, the, the, obviously it started with the cathedral doing, as you were mentioned there, um, broadcasting all the Holy Week services live right. in real time. That's never happened here. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then so many of our parishes, who would have thought how many times we would go on Zoom and other versions now, of... Uh, uh, Brian, you may remember that we did, uh, we did the, the Chrism Mass. Right. That Tuesday, and so I knew I wasn't going to have the priests in the same church with me, so I made 170 calls or whoever, and guess what? They were all home. So, you know, that's the, that's the other good thing about uh, the COVID, that we were all kind of close to our, our, uh, our homes. And uh, uh, I was amazed at the, the pastoral creativity and really the concern for others, which was really very, very important with our people. You know, the... the um I'm very aware of the needs that people had at that time and still have. Uh, the social services that quickly went uh, into further operations. Catholic, Catholic Charities. Catholic Charities. And our parishes and, yes, were, both, were very both. good. Even some of the grants that we received were dispersed to many parishes. And you're right. Parishes have always been a kind of a haven for reaching, for reaching out to people in need. And no doubt about it, uh, people who were calling... Uh, those uh, families who normally receive communion in the home, who were, were reaching out regularly. I, I think uh, the, the, the grace of Christ was alive. Well, and, and, and some wonderful heroic actions. People, parishioners, but also some of our priests visiting nursing homes from outside the door. Uh, waving at people. Well, not only that, giving, giving anointing of the sick. Anointing of the sick that they way. They were called by the hospital and uh, really courageous and, and, and heroic. You're absolutely right. That's right. Um, uh, so uh, formation, worship, social services. It's like we actually didn't stop anything, no. but we did it in new ways. No, I remember writing to, you remember this too, writing to the parishioners, I think, you know, 65,000 households received a letter and in it, it was a litany of gratitude. Yeah. And it mentioned in one letter uh, the 12 or 13 different events where ministries and the work of Christ continued. And I don't even know so many things that went on with individual people reaching out to family members, to others in need. So really, I think the charity yeah. of Christ. Yeah. We say the common good is meant to bring together a composite of things so that both as individuals as, 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 and as a community, we are fulfilled, yeah. that no one is left behind. And I, I think, not perfectly, but I think uh, we can look back positively about the effects that are still going on, of course, sure, as sure. we mitigate things. Uh, how about the broader community? 
how, how is the church's place in that in this yeah, kind of time? Yeah, very important. I mean, we're, we're always going to be a witness, so we want to be good examples of what's going on. Uh, we also want to take an interest, especially where there is vulnerability. And I think good dialogue and cooperation, and I think that was something that, that was marked both with our, uh, I think of my contact with our mayor and with the governor, uh, good and healthy, respectful dialogue that needed to be done so that we all were working together. Never would have thought we would spend yeah, day after day talking to the health department, Absolutely. talking to civic, what a, what a different time. Brian, but, but uh, we owe a debt of gratitude to you because you did yeoman's work with others in trying to keep us all safe and and communicate. Well, that was big. Lots of, lots of people did lots of good work. Absolutely. Even their record got out every week, so that's very good. Well, thanks, Archbishop, for this, and thanks all of you for tuning into this segment. Stay tuned when we have a special guest coming up in the next segment. I'm Archbishop Joseph Kurtz, and I'm here in the very beautiful Church of St. Francis of Assisi here in Louisville in order to greet you and also to present to you the gift once again of supporting the Catholic Services Appeal for 2020. We are in the midst of great, great challenges. The COVID-19 pandemic and all the restrictions that we have, the challenges of the sins of racism that we need as a, as a nation and as a church to deal with. And in the midst of all of that, I hope that you are proud of the way in which your church in ministries continues to serve. I thank you for your willingness to be part of that great gift. The theme of We Are Called is an echo of the call of Jesus Christ for us as a church to continue to live as a body of Christ Watch now as we present to you some of the exciting things that are part of this year's Catholic Services Appeal. The Catholic Services Appeal, the biggest contribution it makes is funding the operations of the Archdiocese. I personally think it's important to support the Catholic Services Appeal because what I have learned in my work is that yes, it's important to give locally and to say that you want to support your local missions or your, your local uh, programs. But many times those programs require a much larger funding and that makes those sometimes out of our reach. So by donating to the Catholic Services Appeal, we are pooling our money as an archdiocese. That Catholic Services Appeal is there to step in to make up that difference. So it's important for us to recognize you're a member locally, but you're a member of a broader parish. And that way we can achieve our much broader and important goals. How is it that the Catholic Services Appeal really aids us in uh, vocations? Well, you know, I, I use myself as the example. Um, you know, my education and formation was paid for by the Catholic Services Appeal, by the good people of the Archdiocese, and I've been in service to the diocese now for 31 years. And you think now that a gift in 2020 to this campaign, we are called, is now going to aid in priesthood for the future, the celebration of the sacrament, service of the people of God. So it's important that we don't just think about today, but that we're also thinking now of the future. When the scribe asked Jesus, you know, what, what are the greatest commandments? He says, love the Lord your God with all your mind, soul, heart, all your being, all that you are, and your neighbor as yourself. And I think, you know, in the times that we are right now, we are called to love. And especially if we are people of God, we say we are Christian people, this is the ultimate vocation to love. We're the Filburn family. My name is Eric, this is my wife Carrie, and my daughter Grace. The Archdiocese, comprised of 110 parishes, is the backbone of our church community. 
both who we are and what we do, speaks to that. The Catholic Services Appeal and its programs that it supports is what gives to those in need from our blessings that we are all blessed with, no matter how hard it is to see. We are called to be stewards, and by stewards we should use our time, our talent, and our treasure, especially during the time of pandemic when a lot of people are suffering and are having to go without, and we can use those three things to help others. Even though this is a very challenging time and many people are struggling with money, I believe that it's important to give money to the Catholic Services Appeal because they are able to provide services, especially through ministries or places where you get gain hope or inspiration. And it's important to donate to things that better not only you, but the people around you in your community. The 2020 Catholic Services Appeal theme this year is We Are Called. And I think the, uh, the best way to finish that sentence is we are called to serve. We are also called to action. And that means we need your donations to make these things happen. How exciting it is for us to view the many opportunities that, that we have in support of the Catholic Services Appeal for this year of 2020. In the midst of all the things that could bring out fear in our lives, this is really an opportunity for you and me to purify our priorities, to, to look at what is truly important in our life, to what matters, uh, our faith, our family, the people that God places in our lives, the opportunities to serve one another. As you do so, and as I thank you for all you've done, allow the gift of gratitude to well up in your hearts and to overflow into generosity by your prayers, your involvement and support, and your financial gift to the Catholic Services Appeal, we will continue to walk with Christ, to follow Him as He calls us to do. God love you. Welcome back to segment three. Father John Paul Kern has a great vocation story. Wow, he sure does, and we're so blessed with him and, and with the, so many of the, of the Dominican priests who've served in the archdiocese. Tying the whole show together, the Catholic Services, Services Appeal funds that ministry, but also helps us with our topic now, which is celebrating and paying attention to the Respect Life Month. Yeah. Tell us about the October church. October is Respect Life Month, uh, Brian. We don't want to lose sight of that. Uh, the theme this year, and in fact, it's a beautiful theme. It comes from Evangelium Vitae, which is uh, the, the document of St. John Paul II from the mid-1990s. To imitate Christ and to follow in his footsteps. Doesn't that sound like Pope Francis too? Yes, yes. To imitate Christ and to follow in his footsteps. You know, I think when, when years from now we look back, first of all, on the ministry and, and, and leadership of Pope Francis, we'll remember uh, in a special way, Evangelii Gaudium, the joy of the gospel. Just as with St. John Paul II, we are remembering now the gospel of life. Uh, do they fit together? You better believe they do. Sure. Uh, to promote life and the dignity of every human person and to be a person who lives the joy of the gospel. Connect. And that's what this month uh, is about, respecting human life. We've done this for many years, uh, had an acknowledgement of Respect Life Month, but why an annual focus? Yeah. Well, you know, um, I, I think there's, there's two good reasons. First of all, uh, I think people bring a certain passion for life. Okay. Uh, many know because of my brother Georgie, anytime you hear Down syndrome, I'm out there talking about defending people with Down syndrome. Well, other people have been given the gift and grace of a passion for some other important aspect of, of uh, the pro-life ministry. We last month talked about the sin of racism, as, which is a pro-life event and to, to be able to combat it. And uh, in some ways, we don't want to lose that passion. But then secondly, and this gets to the month also, 
we need to constantly deepen our understanding of where our passion fits into Catholic social teaching. And the way we do that is by broadening our own horizons, making sure that we're not leaving anybody out from, as we say, the moment of conception to the moment of natural death and all the way in between. So this is both a teaching month, it's a, it's a prayer month, mm -hmm. and it's an opportunity for us to, uh, I guess, get our marching orders every year, to stand up for life. You know, the, 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 all that's gone on in 2020 is a, is a reminder of Respect Life. Even during the whole COVID-19 pandemic, we've been reminded of the care of life, those near death, those suffering illnesses. The common good and the dignity of the human person. I think it's, it's been a real illustration that we got to think of others. Well, and the, and the repeated central teaching of Catholic social teachings that's present in all of that. Now, um, one of the things that the resources always point us to is to make it personal. Mm -hmm. And be part of the way personal is to be connected to people uh, as you talked about your brother Georgie, but there's other ways we all of us need to do that. Can you talk a little sure, bit about that? Sure. No, there's that? no question about it. I mean, there, there are there are people who have defended the life of the child in the womb. There are people. In fact, one of the big programs this year is uh, a year of walking with mom and their children. That's right. And so uh, that notion, uh, which is part of the USCCB pro-life activity commitment is, is how are we not simply defending life on a, on a uh, public level, but, but how on a personal level when someone is, is challenged, are we walking with that mother, with that mother's family and with the child in the womb? Uh, and, and the same is true when we look at people who are in nursing homes, at what Pope Francis calls the throwaway generation. Yes. And, and, and how do we not have our hearts go out to uh, children who, who, are, who need a foster home or to people who are without adequate housing and without, uh, without a job? You know, all of this relates to dignity and, and we can't play one against the other. They, they need to be basis. Now, for sure, uh, uh, preeminent is, of course, the right to life itself, because if we don't defend life, we can't defend all the, the things necessary to live a fruitful life. But, uh, but this is a, a month which should bring about unity yeah. within the church in our common commitment and against uh, a consumerism or a selfish culture. It's always saying, no, the way we treat the dignity of that person. And I, I guess they say the mark of a, of a society is the way you have treated the one you think the least of. Yes. So whoever happens to be the least in your life, the way you're treating that person at this time is an indictment, if you will, or a praise on the culture within which we live. Maybe let's help our listeners see it as something that happens both on the level of the diocese and as well as the parish. So the Archdiocese, we have our Catholic Charities work, yeah. our Respect Life office. Um, a diocesan work in this is what? Yeah, absolutely. And in fact, uh, I, I'm so pleased with the way in which our diocesan offices, and I credit uh, a good bit to you, uh, are working as a team. We're working together. And I, I like to say, uh, as you've heard many times, you want a healthy archdiocese, build healthy parishes. So we're parish focused. A lot of good things happen part beyond the parish. We know that. But the bread and butter of Catholic life, of the life of the church, is always going to be centered in the Eucharist and always going to be centered in the parish life. And so uh, I'm just proud of the way in which there's that outreach going on now uh, within our communities, but most especially within our parishes, to be pro-life and to respect human life, again, from the moment of conception to natural death. I like when all people are involved. I like when young people especially are. Yeah. We, uh, I know we say they're the future of the church, or they're the presence of the church, but they're also the future of the church. And so I think uh, there's a, it does our heart good when we see people committed to uh, being ambassadors for life.
I'm glad then to hear more about this Respect Life Month because it's a, it's a reminder of the central focus of the gospel too. Yeah. This is scriptural based. This is not just uh, uh, the new issue of the day. This is, our, this is the heart of our teaching. That's absolutely. Very good. Absolutely. Good. Thanks, Thank Archbishop. You, Brian. Thank everyone for being here for the October edition of Conversations with Archbishop Kurtz. Tune in next month for November.